Hello, hello, hello. Let's turn the music down a little bit. Ah, all right. Welcome to another Wild West Exodus stream where I'm going to try and get some more work done on uh, the Union. The Enlightened is all done now, um, but done some work on these guys, but there's still a fair chunk to be done. So, uh, yeah, thought I would get the stream up and running start cracking on if anyone does join give us a shout say hello if you're watching this over on youtube when i upload this later on uh, this is broadcast live on twitch so twitch.tv slash the hobby lodge um yeah but um uh, in either location give us a, a like or a follow give a subscription to the channel uh, and you can sit back and relax and feel However you wish to engage is always awesome. But uh, yeah. Right, I'll to crack on. Hey, Crispin. How are you? So, the, the bulk of what I need to do now is lots of gold trim. So on all of these kind of union police robots or whatever you want to call them um, I don't know what the greatest movie ever made is I'm not in on this this is a this is an inside joke that I don't know if you tell me what the greatest movie is ever I will I will put it on there <laughs> I feel like this is a this is a gag that I've missed it can't, well, there you go see I can I can never I can never do that. We'll be forever on the outside of this inside joke. As demons and karate, you know. That sounds good. Hey Jim. How is everyone's Friday treating them? I went to the seaside today. That's what I did with my day. For a Halloween themed day out with my kids. <laughs> exactly. That leads you. Well, you know, me and Jim have already done a collaboration. We did it uh, uh, last Wednesday. Well, no, Wednesday before, wasn't it? We did the unofficial hobby hangouts. What the hell it's called? <laughs> you should definitely do that. Yeah, so on these kind of like robot guard things, I'm just going to determine how much gold trim is enough. Because um, one thing I don't want to do is sit here for hours edge highlighting each one of these blooming things. So. I'm looking for what I think would be enough to do. Really, I'm looking for any standout bits. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a. Uh... This is the uh, Hobby Lodge. There's lots of uh, lots going on in this room. It's not too big, but it's big enough to have everything I want. So it's a it's a 13 by 13 foot square with all hobby over this side, which I'm looking at you. So there's computer desking and there's you know all this stuff. And then the other side of the room 
is for board gaming but also the retro stuff in the corner over there and uh, yeah it's a it's a nice place to hang out it's got cameras and microphones everywhere so i can move around the room and have different angles on All the minis are kind of. Uh, let me let me give you let me lift this camera up and I'll give you I'll give you a quick a quick look around. So if I lift this camera up, uh, got a glass cabinet over here. I'll give it back. Got some minis. All these storage bins, especially those shit, those kind of drawer ones there. They have lots of miniatures in there, all of those. Uh, there's my Necron army at the top there. Uh, there's my demon army over there. So yeah. And this is the tape. If I flip you around this way, you can see the table I'm starting to build for Wild West. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm very fortunate. It's a very cool. Very cool space to be in, that's for sure. Very lucky. <laughs> now, well, Warren's room, Warren's room will be epic when it's finished. Uh, his room is significantly larger. You can just tell by the uh, the cabinets and stuff that he's got in there. So uh, his, when he's when he's finished, uh, it will be uh, very very cool. And obviously, this is you know this is a wooden sort of you know, building at the bottom of the garden for me, where his is actually a purpose built cellar. So uh, his is significantly bigger. But it will be it will be really cool when he's when he's finally got it finished. It will be super cool. I don't know why I'm not using a grip here. Yeah, definitely. You should definitely. Do it. They've been. Uh, I can highly recommend them. I've been to three in my time, uh, and they are they are really good. Uh, you should definitely try and go to them if you can, for sure. Obviously, you know they, they aren't uh, they aren't a cheap. Well, it depends on depends on where you're coming from, but they're, they're not a cheap weekend. With all the base, <laughs> yeah, yes, Fox and Hyde, you're hundred percent right. Uh, with the yeah, don't, don't eat some vegetables and stuff before you go. Uh, yeah, well, okay, then then it's a then it's a hell of a trip. Yeah, so I've done. Um, I can, I can, I'll show you that these are these are some of my uh, favourite things. But if I stand up with the camera, I can show you. I can show you the boot camps. So. If I go up here, uh, we've got, uh, so this was um, 2018 boot camp. That was Alt Action Western Desert. Then this one is, uh, this is the first one I went on. A bit reflective, sorry, you're getting a bit of glare. But uh, yeah, you can see this is the Volsung, Volsung boot camp. And then this one. Yeah. 
But yeah, if you can if you can get out to them. Well, I, I'm flying in from London, so I think my air flight ticket was 100 and 100, 100 quid. So yeah, I mean for you guys, it's going to be. I mean, what's a flight from? Florida to London was, oh, I want to say like fifteen hundred pounds or so. It's 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 expensive for you guys. If you're in the US coming over, it's expensive. You know, I have no idea what gym pays when you come over. I'm feeling like it's over a grand for a flight. Hey Tony. Ah, thanks, that leg Saxon. <laughs> Hello, my friend. You're all right. Yeah. So if you're flying, if you're, I mean, the, the flights, even in the UK. I say, so if you lived in England and you wanted to get over to Northern Ireland, you can do it even cheaper by driving and getting a ferry over. Um, but flights aren't bad at all. But from from the US probably 1500 pound plus to fly i'm gonna get all right jim catch you in a bit ah oh, thanks tony thanks for coming in and that's really awesome of you but you know if 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 you're lucky enough to have that as expendable income and you can make it over to one of the boot camps they are a great laugh. They're a great crack. They really are. They're the best time I've had in the hobby is, is doing that. I would I would definitely I will definitely be doing more of them in the future. Um, ah cool. Thanks, I appreciate it, I really do, thank you. So yeah, we're this we're just testing out with this one here how much gold trim i want to do on it um i'm not entirely sure um if i want to go so these guys i've i've kind of been working on these an awful lot uh so they're, they're probably 80 percent there i reckon these guys uh and this this guy needs a whole lot of highlighting done but you can get the gist of what they're going to look like i decided to use the um on the box art they have like blue electric obviously because it's tesla type power but i really didn't i really didn't fancy doing it so i thought i would just cheat so i've used um uh, the tesseract technical paint to do it and we're going to go with the green i still think it looks pretty effective with the blue armor and the and the yellow sand have that kind of green glowing um electrical effect uh and it's a hell of a lot faster than me sitting here painting um the blue so yeah Walking Dead. I miss. I, I own the Walking Dead game, but I, I was I was quite late into the hobby. I think I was twenty fifteen when I got into the hobby, um, and I think I can't remember when the Walking Dead one. It might have been twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Um, uh, I've, I've never done any hobbying in the US. No, I haven't. Yeah, I think I remember. I think I remember you seeing Tony. You said you'd pre-ordered it. Uh, Am I going to brain matter beige it up? I might. Well, the, the the sand will get a pigment powder, so I use um, this stuff. So I will brush that over the uh, bases and also a little bit up the legs and stuff, just to kind of make it look a bit dusty. That's what I've done on all of the other models, and it comes out okay. So um, just so it gives me and it gives the sand a bit of texture and a bit of color differentiation. But yeah, we're just seeing on this one where we're going to be planting the colors but no i've not done any i, I really want to go to like a gen con or an adepticon um next year me and my oldest boy are going to go to essen which is in germany um that'll be really that'll be really fun 
But yeah, after that, I think we'd like to make the trip over to do a, a an Adepticon or a um, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I could go. I could go. Yeah, I could go and see him. <laughs> We were going to go to Essen this year, but it was still a bit, you know, still a bit precarious to do travelling and stuff at the moment. We've been away on a family holiday. We went to Spain, and that was that was fine, but we still had to go through all the testing rigmarole and all that sort of business. So, um, yeah, man, definitely, definitely. That's cool. So, yeah, I've been a bit afraid of using. I've never really, like I say, I'm a, I'm a tabletop hobbyist. Like I, I'll do best efforts. So, um, you know, I will paint to what I think is a good tabletop standard. Um, some stuff is successful. Some stuff isn't. Uh, pigment powders I haven't really messed around with. And I recently did it for um, things like uh, where are they? Uh, I can't remember where I stuck them there. Let me see if it's Painted up some thousand suns. Uh, so I started messing with pigment powders on like the legs and stuff to see if I could get sort of a dusty effect. Um, you know, and I did some on some grey nights as well, and it was it was hit and miss. It was some bits looked good, some bits not so great. Uh, put it on this guy as well. You know. Yeah, the, the, the grey nuts count. This was some. These were just some kill teams I was doing. And like I said, I was messing with the pigment powders to see if I could get uh, just so they didn't look clean. So obviously these guys have been running around a Mars-like planet that stays in focus for a second. Um, so now I've done it with a few. I was like, ah, oh, sorry, I'll keep doing this then. So uh, yeah, on the um, Wild West Exodus ones. I decided to keep it going. Yeah. Thanks, Crispin. Yeah, 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 I can paint fairly fast. I can paint to a, a good tabletop standard um, to where, you know, at the sort of three foot test, you go, yeah, it looks like a good miniature. I recently just painted this. This is the biggest thing I've ever painted. I can reach in without knocking anything down. This is the last the last project I finished. It was my uh <laughs> can't even get him under the camera, he's so blimmin' huge. So, I, uh, just to keep light. There we go. That's my uh... <laughs> It's my largest model I've ever painted, which was my Archeon. Came out all right. So I primarily paint with um, contrast paints as well. So that's all that, that entire Archeon was done with contrast paints. So I could airbrush a bit of it on, paint a bit of it on. Um, Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... When I use contrast paints, like, these are... This is contrast paint. So this is, um... The, the blue is actually a contrast blue, but airbrushed over, um... 
things like lead belcher so it's actually airbrushed over a silver and you get a really nice kind of metallic candied effect um, but these took no time at all to paint because it is just airbrushing I was able to do the entire force very very quickly now it's just building layers on top Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, contrast paints. I'll be interested to see how the... Um, I haven't tried any of them yet, so I have no idea what, what the uh, new Army Painter ones are like. I'm in danger of doing too much on these guys because I wanted to keep it simple. Um, because these are just grunts and I don't want to spend ages just constantly edge highlighting every single one of them. I want to find like what's a good balance of just enough edging to make them interesting. Yeah, something like that, really. lead belcher on the palette so i've got some of that going mm. thanks everyone for uh, joining tonight it's really nice when um, a few people are here to have a chat with anyone got anything planned for the weekend anyone hobbying over the weekend anyone hobbying now sort of thing i'd really like to get these guys finished this weekend if i can it is definitely the plan if i can get them finished it means that i'm then sort of free to try and get a game on if i can I can't play with unpainted miniatures. The Cardinal Sin. <clears throat> ah, cool, Jim. Nice. Like still, still historical, but just with a Halloween twist, or actually um, a battle that took place in Halloween. There must be, there must be a famous battle that took place on Halloween, surely. Ah, oh, that sucks, Jim. Uh, oh yeah, shit, yeah, he did. What? We play that. Is that showing up? It's showing up on my screen. Jim, that's freaking awesome of you, buddy. Dude, I think it's I think it's come through twice. I'll send one of those back to you. After the stream, mate, I'll log in and send one of those back because it's come through twice. I think. Did it play on the stream? definitely popped up on my screen then and I could see you on uh yeah I could see you on the on the on the thing yeah yeah 
skin. That's super awesome of you, buddy. Thank you. I am actually going to set up a fund. Um, that I, obviously, I'm not going to set up, but I want to. I've decided that if I'm going to keep doing this, I'm going to move away from using. Um, so, in case people didn't know, I use this. What your this camera you're looking at right here is actually an old mobile phone. So I use phones because phones have got pretty awesome cameras in them. And if you hook them up by USB and use some software, it turns a pretty good cameras. Now, the problem with it is, is it's a bit hit and miss. And also sometimes they lose connection or, you know, mobile phone weirdness. So what I'm, I'm going to do is actually buy a decent camera. Um, but from what I've seen, they, they're fairly expensive. I'm going to try and get hold of a second hand one. Not because I can't afford a new one. Just for this, this is genuinely a hobby, not a job or anything like that. So you know that's money i'm taking away from my family so if i can pick up a second hand one that's um that would be great uh so i use one i use some software called iv cam and it's super cheap it's like 10 quid and you can install it on a number of devices and uh it's, you can hook it up if you've got an android phone or actually it doesn't matter you can use ios or, or an android phone but you can hook it up by usb c which means you can get like really fast um throughput on it um, like I say, and the image is really good, right? I can cut really close. And because it's a phone, I can literally touch the screen and I can zoom in and out by using pinching with my fingers. Uh, I can obviously turn the light on. So that's the the camera phone. You can even turn smoothing on, which I wouldn't recommend because uh, <laughs> it just, but uh, that's what I use. But I think I will um, treat myself at some point and get a proper camera. So Jim, that, donation will 100% go in that pot um and we'll um start we'll start heading towards getting ourselves a decent camera because that's the only thing i'm missing really everything else in here is really really good I'm, i don't need anything um but it'd be nice to have a straight down camera like the most of the professionals do we have a really good camera that hangs down um is looking dead straight down on what i'm painting um Thanks, Tony. Yeah, I've um, been tweaking with that a little bit. I use a bit of software. Um, I, again, I haven't got a super expensive mic. I've got a snowball um, with a pop filter and on an arm. Um, and then there's a bit of software that's doing a bit of jiggery pokery. Because I think the snowballs aren't very good at bass. So um, you sort of have to... I use a piece of software called... Is it Voice Meter, I think it's called? Uh, yeah, Voice Meter. And there was like some recommended profiles. So, uh... yeah, I think it's just it's just the camera I'd like to, uh, um, you know, sort of get something a bit more. And also just for the fact of taking pictures of miniatures as well. So when I when I finish the miniatures, I use my phone to take pictures. And again, it's a bit hit and miss um, what the quality is like. So. If I get a new camera, it will do all of that. I can use it for the streaming, I can use it for taking the actual pictures. Um, I'll do a bit of research to see what um, camera setups people recommend. I'll probably talk to someone like um, January Vision or someone like that. Obviously, he does this all the time. He's probably running something that's very high end, I would imagine. But we might not go there. Even I might even talk to um, Blackjack and uh, see what he's running. Yeah, exactly, and that's what this is. This isn't. Um, uh, this is purely just for hobby. I mean, I say that, and I'm sitting in a. <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh, it's just for hobby, and I spent a significant amount of money on building this place and all the rest of it. So <laughs> it's. It's for hobby, yeah. 
It's a hobby that we spend a shed ton of money on. Wouldn't even want to get. I wouldn't even want to know. I don't think how much money I've spent on this hobby. Holy monkey! It would be a shocking number, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've said this many times, but um, I said I said to my wife that when I pass away, uh, she can just leave me in here, and uh, from up at the house, just fire a flaming arrow into it, so I can go like a Viking and just be burnt in my uh, in my little lodge. Uh, you know, that's that's how I want to go. I'm definitely faffing now. This is not this is not what I want to do. This was supposed to be keep it simple, stupid. Um but I've got to repeat this ten times. To be honest, I think that looks okay. Needs a little bit of a wash and that on this bit of shielding, um, but otherwise, there's enough there's enough edging going on here to just give this police robot, whatever you want to call him, um, a bit of flair. Yeah, ten times that looking ten times over will be will be absolutely spot on. Right, quick little black wash because I want to just do some of the pipe work on him. Chuck a bit of black into where the joins are. I feel like you do on a space frame. They do actually look very this this Union Army now that I've done it. It's blue and gold. It does look a little bit space marine. -y. <laughs> Wasn't intentional, but that's where we are. Yeah, it's it's a nightmare, isn't it? So I'll, I'll be like, yeah, just just do like these are just grunt work. This is just like you know these things are going to be on the table for five minutes. They're going to be killed. And they're going to be off the table again. Don't sit here for an hour doing one of them when you've got nine of the same guy to paint. Do a quick bit of highlighting. Move on because when they're all together as one coherent force, no one's going to notice the difference whether you did that extra bit of highlighting or not. Uh, and just keep going. And then here I am finding little nooks and crannies that I want to highlight. But that is that is genuine. This is it. This is definitely it now. There we go.
So we went from that to that. So I think I don't need to do much more than that. I think that looks fine. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I'm actually going to switch model now because I do want to finish these. So I've now got my baseline. That's what I want him to look like. So that's great. Uh, I'm now going to switch back to this guy because I'd like to finish him with some highlighting and bits and pieces. This one I don't mind spending a bit of time on. I'd also like to finish it because um, it'd be nice on Monday. Actually, no, no, Monday, Monday's wet pretty much. So the other thing, for those of you who are new, on a Monday, I actually do something completely different. So on a Monday night, I stream retro video games. So the, the two things we like doing in this Hobby Lodge is painting miniatures and playing board games and miniature games and playing old video games. So on a Monday, I do Monday Night Retro, where I pick up an old console, and we play a bunch of games, or we play one game and just see how far we can get in the time. Um, this Monday, I will be playing the Sega Saturn. I got a Sega Saturn for my birthday. Uh, it's the console, the one console I didn't have um, my wife very kindly picked one up my birthday and uh, that's what I'm going to be playing I just got your message, Jim. Thank you, buddy. I think you've had to shoot now, but um, I got your message, mate. I shall, shall message you back. You're, a, you're an awesome gent if you're watching this back later on. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've tried to pick up my basing game, Tony. It's something I've... I've never really thrown much effort into, um, uh, and it's something I want to, like, as you know, you're, you're always trying to improve in the hobby, right? You're always trying to do a bit more, um, and basing's one of those things where it's like, I think sometimes it can, you can get away with a not-so-great miniature if you've just put a bit of effort into the basing. It's funny because uh, recently I've been posting some pictures of these these guys, especially the other ones I finished. Um, I'll, I'll grab you. Obviously, um, Blackjack was doing the other ones, there, wasn't he? So uh, my versions of the ones he was painting on stream the other night. So it's quite funny when he was doing his um, um, fire effect. That's exactly the same as I was doing it. But yeah. Um, when I posted pictures of these, most people were more interested in the basing uh, than they were the actual um, mini. So I think you can you can get away with you know ordinary paint jobs um, if you maybe throw a bit of effort into into just making the base interesting. So uh, yeah, this is the spider guy. 
And these aren't, I mean, these aren't even, these are again, these are five minute bases. I'm using textured sand paint. I'm using some actual sand, a couple of little rocks, and then a bunch of tufts. And then a bit of pigment powder on top just to give the sand a bit of depth here and there. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's nothing too, uh, nothing too crazy. Each base takes about a couple of minutes to do. The longest time is obviously the drying time because the textured paint. Um, I use the Vallejo stuff. Uh, it takes quite a while to dry. Yeah, well, again, this is this is contrast paint, right? This is literally, um, if I can focus it. You know, painted in a, a, a grey sear, it's then using Blood Angels Red contrast paint over the top of it. And, and then all I did was grab, I think it was Wild Rider Red, and I just touched each kind of top of each little velvet cushion. And that's exactly what that's exactly what I wanted to look like, Crispin, that kind of crushed velvet um, smoker's chair, you know, that sort of style, whatever they're called. Yeah, that's, exact, that's exactly what I was going for. I'm glad you said it, because that's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> but that's why I genuinely love contrast paints, because you can pull off things um, that in, in the older style of painting, or traditional painting, whatever you want to call it, because there's no negative to contrast paint. I hate people that think they're like cheating or, or talk, talk down about them. Um, they are just another tool in the kit bag. Um, but you can pull off some really simple, you can pull off some really nice effects quite quickly and quite easily. And, and that should be, that should be celebrated because crikey, we all want to have cool looking miniatures. And if you can do it, if there is a slightly easier way to pull it off, then yeah, do it, man. It, it riles me more than it should when people talk about contrast paint as, you know, cheating or you know, not as good as painting with traditional paints. You know, find, find your style and paint however you want. For me, I have found my style in painting with, you know, net primarily contrast paints, and then yeah, that's how I get the best out of what I do. Exactly, exactly, yeah. And my only critics are my kids, and if my kids are happy with them, then I'm happy with them. You know, when I showed my my 14 year old boy, when I showed him Archeon, he literally went to me, Dad, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And I was like, that's it, I'm done, that's it, that works. <laughs> Put the brushes down, I don't need to paint any more on this. Apparently this is the coolest thing he's ever seen, so uh, that'll do, I'm done. Once that's your feedback, you know, you know you're done at that point. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's just that thing. I don't see the. I I get frustrated because I think I'm not getting any better. Um, and and I know and my, it's the it's the classic, isn't it? It's the um, what do they call it? Uh, um, what's it? It's, there is a saying for it. It's about being a fraud. Um, but you're not. People have it in their working life and all sorts. Um, that you, uh, you you always think you're not good enough or you're, um, yeah.
Yeah, you're right. They, they are very, um, and that's why I always Matt Vart. Like one of the things I do say to people about contrast paints is if you just paint them and then leave them, you're right. They have got a real sort of um, uh, comic book style to them, or really poppy colours, and also very shiny. So I always use quite a heavy um, matte varnish. So I use the AK Interactive's Ultra Matte Varnish, which really sort of to tones them down to like his jacket here and stuff like that. Um, if that was just a purple contrast, it wouldn't look like that. So I, I highly recommend anyone using contrast, but then when they're finished, go over with a matte varnish. It makes a huge amount of difference in my opinion. Um, Hey, McGothmog. Oh, I'm, I'm, all, I mean, everyone in, in the hobby, um, I'm always impressed. There are so, some people out there are just incredible. <clears throat> and that's the thing you can't do. You can't compare yourself to others, because for some people, uh, actually no, what's for, some people are just amazing at it. And there is natural artistic talent there. I sucked at art at school. I couldn't, I, if this wasn't miniatures, I wouldn't be doing it because I can't paint to save my life. Like if I was to pick up a brush and, you know, you said to me, you know, paint a landscape picture or something, it would look horrendous. <laughs> I can't do that. Um, but I can do an all right job with a miniature. No, my God, well, you're not, you're not missed, not missed anything, mate. We're just uh, uh, chatting away. Um, I am busting through these Wild West Exodus miniatures. You know, it's all going, it's all going very swimmingly at the moment. Had a day, had a day at the beach with the kids. That was very nice. drive home wasn't so nice there was uh, protesters on the m25 um, meaning that there were hour-long queues on the m25 it was always fun yeah and like you say Tony sort of looking back at what you've done um, does anyone ever repaint stuff that they've looked back at do you ever go back and go I'm gonna uh, you know, chuck that in some Detto or some LA is totally awesome or whatever your poison of choice is to clean your miniatures. Does anyone ever repaint things? I've never really done it. I've done it with a couple of a couple of things. You repaint all. <laughs> I've done it with a couple of things. Nothing nothing too nothing too major. Um Just paint it over. I could be tempted to go back and maybe touch up some miniatures, yeah, you know, with some thin sort of layer paints and stuff. That could be, that could be something I could see myself doing. But to be honest, I kind of look at it and go, well, it was, it was, it's done. It's still, it's still a tabletop mini. It still looks better than grey plastic. So uh, I, I haven't done that to too many. Really trying to get way to paint my mutant chronicles. Well, that's what the Archeon was like, uh, Crispin. I, 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 that Archeon I've had for when did Archeon come out? Maybe four years ago, easily. I think that model came out maybe four years ago. And I built him when he came out. I got home, built him, primed him, and then he sat on the shelf over there for four years because I had that in my head that I wasn't good enough to paint him. Like, don't ruin it. It's an expensive model. I think back then it was maybe a hundred pound model. Um, I'm gonna ruin it, so don't paint it. And it's been sat up there. So uh, it was nice to, uh, yeah, exactly. And you, and you have that in your head of, oh, I'll get better. When I'm better, I'll do it. It's like, I still have these, look. <laughs> this is so stupid some of this stuff is. So I have here, 
uh, three Windsor and Newton brushes, right? And and you know these are up there with some of the best brushes you can you can get, right? They still have their clear tops on, and they have never been touched. I bought these maybe four, three, four years ago, um, and I've never touched them because I'm like I'm not a good enough painter to use these, so don't I can't, I can't justify using them. <laughs> That's how stupid it is. So these will probably never get used. They'll probably sit there forever uh, and never get used because. Oh no, how could I? How could I disgrace my painting? Uh, how could I disgrace these brushes with my crappy painting? So uh, yeah, they sit in this paint holder over this brush holder over here and probably will forever. <coughs> I'm a metal Balrog. Wow, that must be awesome. We painted some old 1980s paranoia messages. Did give them old 1980s sand and goblin green style facing just to pay homage to the decade. Yeah, I did that with my Hero Quest. I painted my Hero Quest and kept it very old school. I really enjoyed painting that. I now have a fully painted Hero Quest and the expansions um, all, all ready to go. Metal Balrog, man, that must be uh, a chunky piece of metal. Someone is sending me a miniature, um, which he informs me there is only 30 of them in the world, and it's all metal, and it weighs two kilograms. It's a giant, um, and uh, he's asked me if I would paint it, and I'm very honoured uh, to do so, um, but my goodness, I'm also bricking it. But yeah, one one day, one day I will bust out those Windsor and Newtons and uh <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a we'll give it a go. <laughs> uh, I need some uh flesh fading flesh tone, I think. There we go. Yeah, I mean, otherwise I always just use James Workshop brushes or um, these these ones aren't bad. And these are still, actually still expensive. These are the Red Grass Games ones. I don't think these are cheap. I just happened to get a couple when I did the uh, uh, Wet Palette um, Kickstarter. Not the new, there's a new, new one there. There's a, there's a brand. I haven't bothered with that because, to be honest, it's a good Wet Palette, but I wouldn't get too overexcited about it. Hugely different from the ones I used to just make with a bit of parchment paper and a, a an old wash sponge. Um, I don't need to keep paints for days on end, so because I'm, I get it again for maybe professional painters that mix a colour and then need to keep it for days on end. But really, I'm in and out of a miniature so fast, it doesn't need to last. Don't need to do it. Exactly, Freya Rocher box, exactly, that's all you need, right? 100%. Yeah, I mean, I, I am gonna, I am gonna, because I've, I've even got some, so what else have I got here? I've got those Opus ones as well. These are, these are never been used. So I even have, so not only have I got the Winsor and Newtons that have never been used, I even have the, uh, the Opus ones that came, again, another Kickstarter. I don't know where the top's gone for that. This one I may have actually no, this hasn't been used. That's just it's just a bit of dirt. Um, but yeah, <laughs> these ones um, have never been used either. <laughs> Fancy brushes everywhere. It's the same with my airbrushes. I constantly use the uh, the workhorse, which is the Badger 105. I have a really fancy airbrush that I never use. It's like. 
I don't need to. That one just works. <laughs> you buy nice toys, you're like, oh, I must get something really nice. And then you you don't want to use it because uh, it might not be good enough. I know it's stupid, but you can't help how your brain sometimes thinks about these things. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this uh, this um, this model coming. That's kind of what spurred me to do the Archeon, really, because when he said it was a big, it's a miniature, but it is a big miniature, and it weighs two kilograms, and it's it's solid metal. I was like, okay, um, I don't really paint big minis, uh, so I better get some practice in. So I I, I painted the Archeon which is the biggest miniature I own. Well, actually, it's not the biggest miniature I own because I own the Joan of Arc dragon, which is very large. Um, and I haven't painted that yet, so I do need to uh, bust that one out at some point. I don't think there's much more I want to do on this guy. I keep going back around him and looking at him, but uh, I'm just trying to... Some of the golds are a bit weak where... It's maybe a bit thin. I'm gonna reinforce it in some areas. Yeah, huge. They aren't there. Yeah, constantly. Yeah, you you are your worst critic, right? Hundred percent. <laughs> You're 100% your worst critic. It don't matter me if it will tell you how good you are or anything like that. You just kind of go, yeah, that's you being nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> guy's pretty much done I don't really need to keep fiddling with it I think it's maybe a little bit of white on his shirt collar and stuff just to give his shirt a little bit of a uh, color or, or, or highlight Nothing much. Tony. This is another thing. This is the first thing. That, um, well, I didn't buy. I didn't buy this. This was sent to me by um, the guys over at, on tabletop. Kind of a hey, we'd love to see if you would uh, be up for painting this and, and getting involved with us and stuff like that. And I've never done that before. I've never been sent a product by anybody or. Um, you know, any of that kind of stuff that you know, influencers kind of get and, and, and do. Um, so there is a, I instantly felt that pressure of, oh man, I need to do a good job because these guys have sent me this. And it's funny again, you put that pressure on yourself to, uh, do things.
even when they say to you, there's no pressure, you know, you just, you just do it, take the box, you know, have a play with it, let us know what you think. If you want to do a stream on it, do a stream on it. They're extremely cool, they weren't like, you must do X, Y, and Z. It was like, no, you, you do what you want to do. Thanks for coming, Tony. I really appreciate it, mate. Thank you very much. See you again, my friend. Very cool. Yeah, when we're getting near 400, I'm definitely going to do a celebration stream and give some stuff away if and when we hit 400 it'd be really nice to hit hit 400 uh, followers that's that's a lot it'd be very very cool all right so whilst i've got this skin color out i'm gonna i'm gonna do the highlighting on this one An old Union Bell here because she was another this miniature. If anyone gets to build this miniature, crikey, this what this miniature was a pain in the backside to build. But what is a singular miniature? Doesn't look like she's a tough miniature to build, but for some reason they made her legs, skirt, and belt six individual pieces. <laughs> Which makes no sense. when you're trying to stick this thing together literally like an octopus trying to hold all these bits together so they don't fall apart on you what I do like though is that she has brass knuckles Clearly in the game, she is not a lady to be messed with because in both hands, she has a lovely set of uh, brass knuckles on her on her hands. <laughs> I think this is her just having delivered a nice uppercut to someone's chin. Guy's got a little bit of skin on his face, not much.
Oh yeah, we should be able to open it. Uh, have a look. Oh yeah, I don't know if it might. Um, let me see. Uh, I need access. I can say uh, I can request access. You should get a pop-up saying that I just requested access to it. Say from from Martin. <laughs> this is your Freer Fre Roche um, wet palette. Yeah, this guy's. Like how he's turned out, he's all right. He looks like a, he still looks like uh, he's like a techie guy, but still got a nice bit of wild west about him. Oh yeah, I can see it now. It's very clean, my friend. Very clean setup. A little bit too clean. <laughs> I'm going to use a little bit of Necron compound, which is a dry paint. Um, just to. Scratch up his blue bits. In places. Boots. That doesn't look as shiny and new. His fingers. And yeah, I think he's done. Needs a bit of pigment sort of brushed on his base. I'll do that all in one go. I won't do that now, but yeah, we're gonna use the pigment on the base and then just brush it up his legs a bit not too much um just so it looks like sand has been you know swirling up and catching his legs and stuff but yeah he's he's done I like that uh union bell i don't think she's got a million miles to go you know
yeah so i will be i'm still streaming for a bit now but uh, i'm going to be back on tomorrow morning uh, because i want to try and like i say get this i'm hoping that after tomorrow's session these guys are done certainly done to a point where i can put them on the table and get a game going with them because i do i do want to play the game i do want to try out the game um but i didn't want to put them on the table until they were painted so hoping Because then I'd like to live stream a, a game if I can. Be too bright. Thanks, man. Yeah, that, that's um, basically uh, Palisar Blue airbrushed over Lead Belcher. So what I tend to do for these is I prime them black. I overbrush with Lead Belcher. So, you know, the brush, it's not quite dry brushing. It's still quite a lot of, bit, it's still a bit of paint on there. That means I'm left with pretty much a silver covering, but black in the recesses. I then come back and airbrush with the blue. Um, Contrast paint goes wonderfully in an airbrush. You don't need to thin it. You don't have to do anything. You can just crack on. So uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of that in the airbrush. Very precarious this model because uh, she's only standing on one leg, so uh, it does feel like um. But the difference is I've had to paint her cap, non lead belted, but it's still the same color blue on her hat on her hat. But obviously her hat is cloth, and her armor is metal. So I've tried to make it so that you can try you can at least see a bit of the difference between the two. So the, the, the armor's got a metallic finish and the, the hat I'm hoping to uh, give more of a cloth finish. Yeah, I, I do like it as a colour. That's what I did with these guys. That's what my um, my Thousand Suns are. My Thousand Suns are airbrushed um, blue. This is, again, primed, primed black, dry brush silver, and then airbrushed. And it's it's the only way you can... I mean, this, the smoothness of it on the shoulder there is where you can see it at its best. Um, you know, there's no brush strokes there. There's no, it's just a nice, smooth covering... Uh, and gives you that kind of handy effect or whatever it's called um, it works really well on Thousand Suns this is definitely how I would paint them if I was doing a big force of them I even did it for um, 
silver templars so for these guys i did the exact same um oh sorry uh gray knights not silver templars gray knights um was to dry brush them silver and then I, I i used really thin amount of of this blue um to give them that kind of you know they have that kind of almost electrified silver don't they so it's really the blue is really subtle it probably doesn't pick up on the camera but you can see it when you're looking at it it's in there um and it come out really nicely on these obviously you can concentrate it however much you want but um I think Union Bell's done as well. Happy with her. Maybe a little bit of um highlighting on the hair, maybe, but that's about it. I don't think it actually needs it. I think this is. Surplus to requirements. I think this uh, additional. I mean, more danger of making it look. Yeah, I'm going to screw it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it and then I instantly go in and paint something. I'm going to pick out a few strands if I can. To give it some depth in some places. It goes outwards in certain areas. heavy Thing I do hate doing, I don't know if anyone else hates doing this. I freaking hate painting skin and faces. Faces can do one, in my opinion. <laughs> I think Union Bell was done. Uh, 
So this guy. Put me gold. I put me gold down somewhere there it is. That's been really nice guys tonight. Thank you for everyone who's been in the chat and said hello. Super nice. Really, really nice. Genuinely very nice. We were talking about it on another stream the other night, um, and someone was saying um, how some streamers, when they're painting or something, don't talk, they just paint, and there's a bit of music going on. And um, it's actually really hard because, you know, if you've got no one to talk to, then actually it's quite hard to talk to nobody you, know, you can sit there and you know talk for a little bit maybe talk about your day talk about what you've been up to and all that sort of stuff but if there's literally no one to talk to because your stream um has got no one in it you know, sort of just starting out and you're trying to grow and all that sort of stuff pretty hard it's sort of a catch 22 because you want to you want to talk to people but you've got no one to talk to you talk to yourself and there's only so long you can talk to yourself before you go now I'm just rambling much like I'm doing right now but yeah, <laughs> you just <laughs> but when do you uh... yeah. it's, quite, it's quite hard so yes I think it was um, it was also I think Sundancer made a, a comment about um, and I don't I felt like it was very aimed at me I don't know if it was aimed at me but it felt very aimed at me he said he went he watched the stream and it was just looking at the top of someone's head because <laughs> they've got their head down all the time then so why have a why have a face camera when you're going to just look down all the time and uh i couldn't help but think was he talking about me there because i must admit i do have my head down when i'm painting because it'd be hard to not do that but i do try and look up when i'm talking to people um but uh again it's one of those things if you've got no one to talk to you might just zone out a little bit and crack on and get some painting done because you think well I might as well make progress on my project um, yeah exactly yeah cheers for God thanks man yeah I have huge respect for people that speak multiple languages. Always one of the things I've, um, and there isn't, well, I could try and learn a language now, but it would be extremely difficult. But it is a shame that our school system in the UK doesn't teach languages from a much younger age. One of the things I always used to, you know, I've, for, for my work and my job, um, I've travelled all over the world. Um, I've been very, very lucky, uh, and it's always a slight arrogance that we turn up. You're almost like, well, I hope they speak English because that's all I speak, and um, and and people do. They just, no, they just, you know, some of them speak better English than you do. So uh, you always feel awful. You're like, oh my god, these people speak like three, four languages. So oh, I only know English. Golf box, and the way you type, um, there would be, no, and I think that's why I, I made an assumption that you lived and worked in Portugal, but were British. Like I, that, I made that. That was a. So when you said you were travelling home or something, I was like, oh, you, you see, coming back to the UK, because I've never, I never would have thought you were. Um, Portuguese. I just, and it's because I also have a cousin who lives and works in Portugal, and I kind of thought you had the same thing because, um, yeah, you'd, you'd never guess it. But you asked me to write a sentence in Portuguese or Spanish or French or German 
or any other European language <laughs> and I could barely write a sentence yeah maybe but I must admit I've never I can say I can wholeheartedly say I've never picked up on it and gone oh that's a bit weird that the goth mob just said that so uh, hats off to you my friend uh, you, you do a, you do a cracking job But yeah, I mean, it's literally wherever, wherever I've travelled in the world, it's uh, always been, oh yeah, don't worry, they'll speak English when you get there. And I know it is the language of business and it's, you know, pop culture, it's, you know, English and all these sorts of things. Um, but still, you, you've got to you put the hours in to learn it. You haven't just, you know. The only time you ever find it over here is where normally it's due to... Um, parents so i do know families that have got you know a spanish mother and english father and the father always speaks english and the mother will always speak spanish to the child and therefore the child grows up naturally speaking both languages um reinforced through education and stuff like that but they, that that tends to be very common which is a really cool way of doing it that is, that is truly cool Yes, or go and live. You're absolutely right. Yeah, go and go and spend time living and working somewhere, and almost learn by necessity. Right, if you're if you're living in a country, you'll you'll pick up bits and pieces over time. Yeah, hundred percent agree. gonna block out a little couple of little bits here with the whites they almost want to show that this this suit is you know powered by this um energy source so uh not gonna do it there but i'm gonna i've done it there and i'm gonna do it like these little vents he's got going on just little holes around him um just to show the green energy through the holes um possibly in this backpack piece as well just because this is the centerpiece model, so it might be nice for him to really have his flow effect on. You do end up learning curse words first, yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I'm the same. If we uh, if, if we go abroad, um, I always try and learn a couple of little things, at least so you can say thanks and, and good morning and good afternoon um, and so on and so forth. But unless you use it all the time, you then don't retain it. So I, I, if we go for like a two-week holiday in Portugal near the end of that two week holiday I'm feeling pretty good I'm like I can go into a shop and I can I can or buy some bits and pieces you know converse with the lady at the till or, or, the, or the person at the till and you know I know when they've said good morning and how much the prices are and but then you come home and two weeks later you've forgotten it <laughs> but you, you feel good in the moment you're like hey I just did you know you're a little challenge I just did that whole interaction in the, in the native language or whatever you know that's always quite a cool thing to do. Like um, my son James, he's learning uh, Mandarin at the moment, um, and he really enjoys it. Uh, so when we went to America, we went to the Epcot Center, and they've got this kind of round-the-world tour. You can go and eat and drink in all these different places. And um, here, there was a, a Chinese area, 
and he went and did he went and ordered a bubble tea but did the whole thing in in mandarin with a lady and she was really surprised that he could like you know say, hey how are you yeah i'd really like a you know a bubble tea how much is that and then he, he, he threw extra bits in um to have it and he come away like literally beaming that he'd done this in uh fully in mandarin i've said to him if we uh if he does very well with his his gcse's with it and that we'll we'll do a trip over to china because i've always wanted to go to to uh, asia i've never been anywhere over there travel i've traveled pretty much everywhere else in the world but i haven't been anywhere sort of um far east up direction i'd love to go I'd love to go to like japan china Ireland, those sorts of places. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it'd be amazing, right? I will definitely, I will definitely get over there. Just because it would be so different. Like, I, I just want to go. Um, and that's exactly it, my goth mob. It's going to be so different. Like, it's going to be such an experience because just at a fundamental level, culturally different to what we know and act and do today um, in the West. And um, like, I just, I just would love to do it. That's one of the things I love about traveling is is doing, being in it. You know, when, what, what do they say um, when in Rome? That sort of saying, right? So you know. When, when I'm in Portugal, I want to live and eat and experience what it's like to be um, in Portugal for real. I don't want to go. I hate I hate going to places. We did this in, in Menorca not too long ago. We went to Menorca. We got a nice, a really nice house over there. And um, we went into like, the local area and there was this place called... It was like an Irish pub. It was like, ah, oh, this is the perfect place for fish and chips and, and your local english well bit like fosters and us oh god i couldn't think of anything worse we avoided it like the bloody plague i'm telling you uh like those sort of, i hate going on holiday and then it's been catered for the english and it's like here's your place to get your bacon and eggs in the morning but like, no please no <laughs> it's like no i don't give a toss about bacon and eggs um so yeah whenever i go on holiday but like no, I want to go to the places that people that actually live here go to. You know, ask around, get some recommendations, go and eat some really nice cuisine and and, and, and drinks and all sorts. And it's a pretty, and the, the reason why they exist is because the British have we've got a bit of a. A, a trait about us about going on holiday and then just wanting it to be just like at home uh, it's not you know these people don't do it because they think it's a good idea they've done it because we've almost asked for it and it's a real shame because uh yeah i i definitely don't want that couldn't be more the opposite of one Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, if you go to like the Algarve or something in, in, in Portugal, there will be that British bit, um, which is, here's where to get your crappy beers and your ham, egg and chips, and your Sunday roast. Like people that go on holiday to these countries and then go, oh, I can't wait. Yeah, good Sunday roast on Sunday. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Why would you go on one of these? You basically want Britain with better weather. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is not a bit of me. Oh, I think the dog wants to come in and say hello. Let's grab the dog.
Come say hello to everybody. Here we go. Oh, you're all wet. You're all wet and muddy. Hey. Okay. Say hello to everyone. <laughs> oh, you're all wet. Ugh. You've been digging. Up whiskers. <laughs> yeah, let everyone say hello to you. Hey. Mm. Oh. Give you a little fuss. All right. Lovely, I love I love this dog. He's a lovely little dog. Isn't ya? Proper hair <laughs> currently her head is like pressed against me. Giving me a proper little hug. Isn't ya? Alright, so you're gonna get on your, butt, get on your pillow then, yeah? Here we go. Look at you done on my legs. I'm with my jeans in dirt. I got dirt. Look, it's proper muddy. In trouble. Clean your feet before I take you up to the house. If you go in the house like that, Mum's gonna murder you. It's proper, like wet. It's obviously raining outside, so uh, proper wet and muddy. Your minx. like how he's turned out i like the little uh doing the little green vents is little touch but it's uh it's worked out quite nicely It's not a million miles away from being done either. Making pretty awesome progress. Trust me, I did do bits and pieces of this. Um, I don't know why I didn't get as many streams in this week, but I didn't stream too much. Where the other guys, I pretty much streamed every every brushstroke. With these guys, I decided that I just sat here one one evening and my son was playing. What do you want now? What do you want? I'm not letting you out again. You can stay in here for a bit now, okay? All right? All right? Stay in here. Dry off a little bit, otherwise you're gonna get in trouble. I'll tell you now, if I let you in now, your, your mum's gonna go spare. I don't know if anyone's ever taught a dog to, to wipe their feet when they go into a house. <laughs> I wonder if that's a trick a dog can learn. <laughs> you, uh, could you wipe your feet when you come in? I oh, know. Oh. I'll put you on my lap. No way, you shit. 
thing. It ain't gonna happen. Huh? I love you. You reckon they can learn, do you? <laughs> She's trying to... <laughs> She's like begging to get off of my lap. Oh. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Go on then, lay, let's see if we can make this work. As long as I can get this arm to hold a miniature. Turn the camera something like this. She wants to lay in my arms. There we go. I can get an arm to rest there. This, this might work, Dusty, but if you start moving, I'll be jogged about and that that won't work. Um Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It looks, uh, thanks, man. Uh, I really like it. I'm so glad I sort of, um, it was actually um, Irish Steve or Genuine Vision on Twitch that suggested airbrushing it. Because I tried to paint it on one last. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to get, because um, contrast paint's been quite see through. I thought, well, if I paint over a silver, I'll get the glint of the silver through the color. Um, but I painted on. Um, contrast over lead belcher and it just didn't look right it looked weird it looked um well you can see the brush strokes for a start uh, and he said why don't you try um uh airbrushing it so i did that and i've done it a few times now and when you've got mostly metal miniatures um it works really nice yeah and 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 the box art shows this is all like a, a blue electricity it's like um whitish blue and i thought well one that's hard to paint like it takes a while to do um so i just grabbed i just thought i'll go with green i'll go it's my model it's just a fantasy it's a weird world war and it's weird world west anyway so what's it matter and i i use the tesseract glow on it now the thing i can go back and do if i want is maybe dry brush uh, the tips uh, with a bit of white to give it that kind of real highlight but to be honest, I'm not entirely sure it needs it. Uh, and it might make it look, I don't know. But it, you know, it's, uh, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. Yeah, exactly. I know, exactly. And I'll, um, the, the base will be a bit more orangey from, from the, uh, the um, pigment. And then the black will be a, it'll be a brown. So it will look, uh, I think it will look, quite good well i'm hoping it does anyway um right um because i've got a dog on my lap i don't think i'm going to be able to continue um because i can't actually get my arm up and it is half past 10 so what i think i'm going to do is end the stream there i will be back i will be back on tomorrow morning um because i want to get these finished so tomorrow morning i'm going to whiz round all of these guys and do all of the little gold trims and everything on the nine guys of these these are finished in my opinion a bit more work on the bikes but not much so i reckon i may be a few hours maybe three four hours away just because of time not because there's anything difficult just a sheer amount of little odds and sods i've got to do on each one of those miniatures so if i say it's 20 minutes a miniature um it's gonna take a little bit of time well, maybe not 20 minutes maybe 15 minutes for miniature. um but yeah um super nice for everyone hanging out tonight thank you for that i will be back in the morning if you're watching this on youtube there's a whole bunch of content on youtube um just search the hobby lodge on youtube if you're, or if you're already watching this on youtube this will be part of a playlist where you can see me have done see me doing all of the wild west exodus showdown of Repu reputation i can never get that word out uh but if you're on YouTube, come over to Twitch, twitch.tv slash The Hobby Lodge, and you can see this stuff live. 
to everyone who's been hanging out with me tonight thank you so much uh, especially jim who's donated to the channel that's super cool as i said i think i'm gonna start putting a little fund together maybe we'll put a fund goal on the stream so you guys can see how we're doing um to getting a decent camera um for for the setup um that'll feel like a nice reward for getting you know just doing the streaming and everything but yeah thanks for hanging out mcgothmog thanks for chatting thanks to everyone that's been in crispy and, and uh, tony and jim and uh, everyone else has been in there it's been super nice super cool uh be back on tomorrow morning for more of the same right say good night dusty ready say say bye bye Look at my muddy feet. <laughs> right.